Welcome to the Way TV, Wake Up America. Yes, it is true. Last week I was called, I was told by a friend, a deputy sheriff of Los Angeles, that indeed ISIS uh, in their magazine called Dabik, D like David, A, B like boy, I, Q like queen, Dabik on page 58, 59. They published my picture and they called me a crusader and they said I have to die. They have to kill me because I mock the prophet Muhammad. So with great crocodile tears, and I am absolutely mortified and terrified, I will sing my ode to Muhammad. O oh, Muhammad, Allah Akbar, you beat the girls all black and blue. You're a wild man, such a madman. O oh, Muhammad, it is true, in a cavern without Khadija, drinking camel piss, you know, to a Muhammad, dreadful prophet, and his silly old burro. Hee-haw, hee-haw, hee-haw. Okay, so for real, I met with the FBI and with the sheriff where I live, and uh, so we're doing what we can, frankly. ISIS, I don't care if you kill me. I don't care if you cut my head off. I don't care if you shut me up, um, because if you kill me, a million other Christians will step up to go ahead and tell the truth of what did Muhammad do. And talking about lunatics, lunatics, let's go to clip number 21 and listen to a lunatic. Clip number 21, or Mimo. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Check this out. We're back, and you're back, and we're here at the mailbag. We're dealing with the mail that comes here to the Dean Show. I'm your host, Yusuf Estes, and we've been talking about the subject of the Jews and Christians and their treatment in Islam. And what we find is in the Quran some words that are being misunderstood because of translations. Highly recommend to all of you to learn the Arabic language. If you learn the Arabic language, then people can't trick you anymore, and you'll know what it really says, okay? We have a website for that called ArabicInEnglish.com. Arabic in English.com. You can use the English you already know to start learning something about Arabic. You'll feel a lot more comfortable. I know I do. Now let's come to the next subject. Somebody comes to us and they say, why does your book, meaning the Quran, why does your book say to kill all the Jews and Christians? <laughs> well, first of all, it doesn't say that. But still we reply back by saying, thank you for asking me about my religion. In Islam, we cannot lie. We have to tell the truth and we have the truth proof to back up what we say. But sometimes people say things that are in the question is not true. So let's deal with this. What does it say in the Quran? Actually, if we'll begin with the first instance of this in the Quran in chapter 2, called Surah Baqarah, the cow, verse 190, telling us about fighting. And it says, you fight them where they fight you. But if they stop, you stop. Because otherwise, you become the transgressor Verily, Allah does not love the transgressors. Next verse. And kill them wherever you find them and turn them out from where they turned you out. But again, it's reminding you, you have to stop if they stop. Now, let's deal with a couple of words here. Actually, in Arabic, it really doesn't say fight and it really doesn't say... All right, so, they guy... Got... I'm accused often of being blunt. I guess I am. <laughs> um, you Sylvestes, you're a screwball. Dude, you got some, uh, you need to tighten up that brain housing group of yours. Okay. It's very interesting, misleading, lying, what he's doing. Okay. As Jesus said, you will know them by their fruit. So that means you will know them by their teleological ends. Tele teleological is a big word. This just means... Watch what they do, what they do, that's what they believe. Or in the Latin, you have the de jure and the de facto. Under de jure, it's written, and this is what people are supposed to do. But in reality, in real life, de facto, what do they do? Okay, so then Yusuf Estes goes back to their old canard. It's funny as heck to me. He goes back to chapter 2. Now, the first four chapters of the Quran are all about peace, love, dove, can't we all just get along? We love you. We love the Christians. We love the Jews. This is called the Mecca phase of Islam. Mecca phase, Medina phase. The Mecca phase, what did Muhammad do? When Mecca, or I'm sorry, when Muhammad was weak during the Mecca phase, the first four chapters of the Quran, we love you, we want to get along with you, love, dove, peace, etc. 
beginning with chapter 5 and through the rest of the Quran, specifically through um, chapter 9 and chapter 8 of the Quran, you have what's called the Medina phase. When we, the first four chapters of the Quran, lie, <laughs> and Yusuf Estes, that's the biggest lie I have ever heard since I caught my five-year-old kid stealing cookies and candy out of the cookie jar. Really? In Islam, you're taught not to lie? How about takia, the Arabic word? You always lie to the infidel Yusuf Estes, and you know you do. Yusuf Estes, not only are you a screwball, but you're also a liar. Yusuf Estes quotes from chapter 2, and that's... This is called the abrogator and the abrogated verse. In the first four chapters of the Quran, which Yusuf Estes is lying, going back and saying that we love the Christians and Jews, those have all been abrogated. The greater the number of the chapter in the Quran, it is held to be true, and it is the abrogator. So if you have in the first four chapters of the Quran, all this stuff, the Mecca phase where we love people, they've all been abrogated. Any Islamic scholar, if he's capable, Yusuf Estes, which obviously you're not because you're a screwball and a liar and you do what did Muhammad do, any scholar in Islam understands this and knows this. I, I enjoy working with people who speak Arabic and who understand what's going on. First four chapters are lying, Mecca phase, then from chapter 5 on, you get to the truth where they kill and whack people. The Muslim Brotherhood motto comes out of chapter 8, verse 60, where you were supposed to kill and terrify all of the infidels, and infidels would be the people of the book, the Christians and the Jews. There's other verses in the Quran that goes on to see, oh, Muslim, when you see a Christian, or I'm sorry, a Jew behind a stone or a tree, you're supposed to kill them. So Yusuf Estes, um, you're going to hell. You need to repent. You're going to hell. You need to repent. You're still alive. There's still time. You can give your heart to Jesus because, frankly, guys like me, military-type guys found in Romans 13.4, under the four divisions of the divisions of government under Christianity, yeah. Islam is RPM, religious, political, and military. Absolutely. They do everything through killing and murdering through the jihad. Christianity is also RPM, religious, political, and military. If you look at um, the Old Testament and the New Testament, Romans 13 in particular, the military is a huge part of the economy of Christian government. That's why our commander-in-chief is called the, the president, is called the commander-in-chief. It's why we have a Navy and a Marine Corps going back to the formation of the Constitution. It's why the Northwest Ordinance of 1784 and 1787, which brought in the next 35 states after the 13 original colonies became states, is based on Christianity. And that we have always properly, as Jesus said, sell your cloak and buy a sword. We have two swords. That is enough. The, being in the military, the police, the sheriffs, is a way that we protect our families. And a man who does not take care of his family 1 Timothy 5.8 is worse than an infidel. Um, so don't be fooled. Now, ISIS, really, ISIS are good Muslims. Don't let them fool you. ISIS are bona fide Muslims. When um, Obama, George W. Bush, Tony Blair, David Cameron, Merkel of Germany, and Hollande, uh, president of France, when they say that ISIS is not Islam, don't let them fool. By the way, if you get a chance, I just got my Ph.D. from Joseph Global Institute, and the book that they use there, Drake, is very good. And their chapter on Romans 13 is extremely good. And um, I will probably in the future be teaching on that one particular chapter, my depth of knowledge on the um, four governments under the um, economy that an organization that Jesus has given us through the Holy Scriptures with you have the, the government of the individual, the family, the church, and the state all get their authority from God who has the law written on the heart when we're born again, when we become Christians, and that's codified in the Ten Commandments. And in Romans 13, 4, God himself commands for the military operating under the minister of God, 
the civil magistrate and that we are to be the wrath of God and a revenger of God based on God's law, the Ten Commandments. And I have Department of Defense documents that prove that. So there should be absolutely nothing wrong in World War II when we conquered Germany, Italy, and Japan, and the American Revolution, and the American Civil War when we fleed the, freed the black slaves, etc. That was all done. In fact, the Battle Hymn of the Republic, which is no longer used de facto and de jure, de jure no longer used as the official song of the Republicans in, I think, verse 5 or 6, when the Northern Army was attacking the Southern army to free the slaves. The, the verses, in the beauty of the lilies, Christ was born across the sea with a glory in his bosom that transfigures you and me as he died to make men holy. Let us die to make men free. That's in the battle hymn of the Republic. That's based on Romans 13.4. And again, a lot of people think that we can't be crusaders. Well, ISIS, ISIS in this article, which is online, you can go to any search engine right there, you can't see it, but it says Dabik, that's the name of the book, Dabik, and you can type that in, D like David, A, B like boy, I, Q like queen, Dabik, and the, room, the number seven, and that will come up, it's a PDF about 90 pages long, it takes about 10 to 15 minutes for it to load depending on your um, computer, and on page 58 and 59, it calls me a crusader, thank you. I appreciate that. You are correct. I am a crusader. I follow the cross. The root word of crusader is cruise or cross. I do follow the cross. I am a military guy. I'm a former Marine Corps enlisted and officer. I have no guilt whatsoever with the blood on my hands because I followed Romans 13.4. The same with my son, the same with my father, the same with my uncles, the same with my cousins, the same with my grandfathers and their fathers and grandfathers going all the way back. I have absolutely no guilt on me whatsoever for defending innocent families in accordance with the Ten Commandments, the law written on art. I have zero, zero blood on my hands. Talking about veterans, um, we know that after Charlie Hebdo, now the Muslims are going in and desecrating the Jewish graves and putting swastikas on the headstones and knocking the headstones down. Now, our army, believe it or not, we have an army. They're not a standing army. We have an army in France and Belgium and Germany. We have an army at the cemetery of France in Normandy. And my question to you, as we show this clip, you watch this clip, they're buried under crossers, crosses. They are crusaders. And they operated under the Ten Commandments, the law written on the heart. I have proof, evidence, and facts of that. I have shared that on this show before. And I want you to think of our, our men who were killed there and are buried as you watch this very moving clip. Clip number 18. Clip number 18. You are about to embark upon the great crusade. The eyes of the world are upon you. The hopes and prayers of liberty-loving people everywhere march with you.
Those are crusaders. Did you notice? They are still there. That is our army still there in France. They're buried under what? The sign of the cross. They're not buried under a hammer, a sickle, or a crescent moon. Those are our young men who died for us. They did it all through World War II in Japan and Italy and Germany, all over the world. They went and did it. And who did they end up fighting? The Muslims. The Muslims, there was thousands and thousands, scores of thousands of Muslims who fought for Germany, and they were the guys that brought in all of the horrible stuff desecrating the Jews. So speaking of desecrating the Jews, let us go to clip number 17, where the Muslims today were desecrating the graves of the Jews that we came to rescue over 60 years ago. 17. France's Prime Minister said Monday the government would defend Jews in France against Islamofascism after hundreds of graves were desecrated at a Jewish cemetery in eastern France. Some 300 graves were vandalized Sunday in a cemetery in Saar Union, a town near the German border. There were reports that they had been painted with swastikas. According to reports, stones were smashed, dislocated or rolled away while marble plates were broken. Locals said the cemetery has been vandalized six times since the end of World War II, but the attack on Sunday was the most destructive and systematic. A stone monument to the victims of the Holocaust also lay broken at the entrance to the cemetery. Prime Minister Valls wrote in a tweet on Sunday that it was an anti-Semitic and despicable act and had promised to find those responsible. Tensions are especially high in France following the attacks in Paris last month, which left 17 people dead. Separately, two people were killed in Copenhagen in two attacks, one at a synagogue, by a gunman over the weekend. So as I was driving over here for the show, I was listening to this radio um, program, and they said that President Obama is trying to be sensitive to the Muslim wishes. Well, I don't understand how you can be sensitive to people who do that. And... My calling as a Christian, I am a warrior. I was an enlisted man in combat in Vietnam and an officer, a battle planner for 3rd Battalion, 5th Marines. And I am very pleased that God has called me to do that job in accordance with the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not murder also means thou shalt defend innocent people. That's what police and sheriffs and the military are supposed to do. And I am proud. I'm happy to be a crusader. I am proud. I boast in Jesus. Okay, clip number, clip number 16. Clip number 16. Again, terror by the fundamental Islam hits Europe, and this time it's Denmark. We send our condolences to the Danish people and also to the Jewish community in Denmark. We call upon the Jews, our brothers and sisters. Israel is your home. We are preparing to absorb a mass immigration from Europe. Jews of Europe, Jews of the world, I say Israel is waiting for you with open arms. Okay, very good. So I showed the desecration of the graves there of the Jewish folks in France, and now um, praise God that uh, um, Netanyahu is offering, he's, he, they're helping subsidize the folks to go from Europe to Israel, $46 million that they're happy to do it. Yusuf Estes, the screwball, and you know what? I'm, in, I'm not impolite. This stuff is so serious, as Oliver Cromwell said, some things are beyond good manners. When you see people being murdered, butchered, killed, raped, and things of that nature, do you think that our language, our behavior, those myself who properly use the sword, are going to come in, come in and say, Jesus loves you? No. We go in to stop those people. Those who survive, we'll be happy to talk to them about Jesus. And it's very interesting, in Psalms 23... The 23rd Psalm, we see the civil magistrate, David, 
Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. And he says he prepares a table before me. Check it out. Having been in combat, prolonged combat, being hungry, fatigued, tired, one of the main most important moments of the day for us was food. Absolutely food. Food. The ability to have food. And then, all of a sudden, I can see King David, and he's there at the, the brook, at the quiet, still waters, and the enemy who wants to surrender because they smell that wonderful food cooking. <laughs> What an easy way to witness to people about the love of God when your enemies come to you and are drawn in by the food that God gives to us, Deuteronomy 28, the blessings and the cursings, so that the enemy comes up and they say, like maybe Uriah, who was later murdered by King David, but at that moment I can sense Uriah creeping up and asking to surrender to David and his men and to serve David and his men that he can have food and he can enjoy the bounty of being a Christian of those days. Sadly, under Islam, Genesis 16, 11, and 12, the prophecy there, the Ishmael, who is claimed by the Muslims to be the father of Islam, is a wild man, a donkey of a man, a braying ass of a man. That's why I sing that song about him and his donkey, which is all out of their hadiths and the Quran also, by the way. I'm not making stories up. But you can sense in Genesis 16, 11, and 12, he's a wild man. He's at war with everyone, and everyone is at war with him. Isn't that a perfect picture of Islam today? The Muslims believe that Ishmael is their father, and they inherit all of the... Um, culture that Muhammad, or Ishmael transmitted. And in fact, later in the Bible, when Nehemiah is rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem, operating properly in accordance with Romans 13.4, being the sword, remember he had the sword, of the civil magistrate following the Ten Commandments, which he did, and he told the people in front of him who wanted to destroy him, there was Sanballat and Tobias, but there was also the sons of Ishmael, the Arabians. That's found twice in Nehemiah. It's interesting to me as a military warrior that Nehemiah, as far as we know, never had to use the sword. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they are the sons of God. Okay, so we started with this guy Yusuf Estes talking about nowhere in the Quran or in the Hadith or in the tradition of Islam do you find kill the Christians and the Jews, and yet everywhere they go, ISIS, everywhere, Boko Haram, Al-Qaeda, Taliban, good Muslims fulfilling the Quran. This is in my left hand. The Quran, 22 verses in the Quran, tells a good, the Muslims, a good Muslim does what Muhammad did. And Muhammad was an evil, wicked man who murdered, raped, and did all those other things. We talked about that time and time again. And frankly, that is the battle planning of ISIS and Islam is all based on what did Muhammad do. It's all based on the Quran. It's all right there. It's very simple to understand unless you're politically correct or you put blinders on your eyes and you believe in multiculturalism and you, or which believes that all religions are the same. They absolutely are not. In fact, where the bloody banner of Jesus is gone, you will find the highest degree of, highest degree of peace, order, liberty, and prosperity. But wherever Islam is gone, you will find the highest degree of hostility, disorder, slavery, poverty, and women-hating misogyny. Okay, so Yusuf Estes comes on and he lies through omission, which is as bad or worse than lying through commission and saying you need to learn Arabic. That's a bunch of hooey. Who needs to know Arabic? I mean, I can go to technical manuals in English and have them translated into Arabic and Arabic and have them translated into English. It's no big deal. It's more of their smoke and mirrors and uh, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain type deal. Okay, now we have another very dangerous man, Dr. Zakir Naik, who's huge in the Islamic world, and he's going to try to answer, why are terrorists Muslims? Well, it's easy. Why are terrorists Muslims? Because in my left hand, in my left hand holding the Quran, 22 verses in the Quran, uh, 860, where it says, Terrorize the infidels, use steeds of war, tanks and cannons and things of that nature. 
Then in um, the Quran 929, kill the people of the book, kill everybody. And there's many, many, many other verses too. So we got Yusuf Estes lying like Pinocchio. And then in this clip, we have Zakir Naik being clever, and he lies too. Clip number 20. Clip number 20. Of the most common question that I've been on Muslim is that if Islam is the best religion, then why you find most of the terrorists are Muslim, most of the robbers are Muslim, most of the people who cheat are Muslims? Why? If Islam is the best religion, then why do you see that the Muslims are the worst? The reply to this question is that the, one of the major factors for this impression that all the terrorists are Muslims, the impression that most of the people who cheat are Muslims, the most of the people who bribe are Muslims, is the media. About five years back, Yeah, he says Islam is the best religion. Well, he also says having sex with sheep and goats is okay, too. Does, uh, also does Ayatollah Khomeini, who is a scholar in uh, Sharia law, even though he was a Shiite, that guy there is a Sunni, which goes right back to the war that we're seeing with ISIS. ISIS are Sunni, and we've got there attacking all of the Shiites. Syria today under Iraq is all Shiite, and Iran is Shiite. So it's the sectarian war. The Shiites are somewhere between 5% and 15% of the body of believers. Who cares? Um, another show, I was listening to another radio show down here, and this guy was waxing eloquent and pontificating, or like uh, Mr. Miyagi, wax on, wax off. I mean, it was crazy. The guy was saying, well, now, you know, there is subtle difference between Al-Qaeda, Boko Haram, um, ISIS, uh, Taliban, and all these other guys. It's like, Really? They all play by the same book. They all play by the same book, okay? Now, we know that metaphorically in the football leagues, in the Super Bowl, you had the uh, New England Patriots and we had the Seahawks, and they both operated under the same rule book, the rules of football. One team won, one team lost. They had their own style, but their goal was to win, to win the Super Bowl. And so it was a very close, entertaining game. And Pete Carroll, I think, did a very interesting thing, and I think he had the right idea. He tried to use a little trick to fool the New England Patriots. It didn't uh, work. It backfired. Okay, that happens. You move on. You go ahead. I think he's a great coach. I think Belichick is a great coach, too. But trying to say that the difference between the New England Patriots and the Seattle Seahawks it, that they were different. No, they operate off the same rule book. The NFL, like baseball, does the same thing where the Dodgers are different than the Yankees. And in basketball, the Lakers are different than the Knicks, but they operate off to the same, same rule book. And it's the same thing with all the different groups, all the different names. They use the same rule book. They use the Quran, the Hadith, the Sira, the Sunnah, and the Sharia. And they kill everybody. They hate women. They do all these crazy things. <laughs> They are good Muslims, according to the Quran. 22 verses of the Quran tells them, if you want to be a good Muslim, do what Muhammad did, which makes them very bad people. It makes them ISIS and Boko Haram and, and uh, Taliban and Al-Qaeda and all of these different groups. They all operate trying to do what Muhammad did. One guy, in fact, Obama said he had talked to the supreme leader of Iran who told him, you don't have to fear that we're going to use our ability to make nuclear energy and that we're going to use nuclear weapons because there's nothing in the Quran about nuclear weapons and us using nuclear weapons. The Quran was written 1,400 years before anybody ever knew anything about nuclear weapons. Under the doctrine of equity, that is, understanding the scriptures and applying them under modern tools of the trade today. While they only used spears, bows, and arrows in those days, today they use AK-47s and RPGs and suicide bombers. And if they had the nukes, they would do it. Under that doctrine of equity, where you adjust 
technology under the law. For example, I believe it's the fifth that uh, um, illegal searches and seizures, it might be the fourth uh, amendment to the Bill of Rights, that your mail and your house is your castle and cannot be invaded. Well, we use that today for emails and uh, monitoring us through NSA and things of that nature. Okay, and that's that doctrine of equity. All right, clip number uh, 15, clip number 15. Vi kan se billeder her fra Krutun. Man kan altså se ganske tydeligt skudhullerne i dørene i glasfacaden, som er øh, i, i øh, facaden til Krutun. Altså en café, der ligger lige bag ved parken på Østerbro i København, hvor der var et øh, debatarrangement i dag, som skulle handle om kunst og ytringsfrihed og blasfemi. Vi ved, der var en til flere kunstnere øh, til stede. Det var arrangeret af Lars Vilks komiteen, og den franske ambassadør i Danmark var blandt andet til stede. Alle kunstnerne skulle som sagt være uskatte og være øh, sluppet derfra igen. Og nu skal vi ud til Krutsen. Vi har øh, Palle Poulsen, TV2-reporter, med der. Uh, later on in there, um, they say they were yelling Allah Akbar and whatnot. That was in Denmark just a week ago, and what they did there, they were having a uh, a debate on whether or not to do cartoons of Muhammad or not, and the Muslims got so bad they just went and killed a bunch of people yelling and screaming Allah Akbar. Whereas under the, um, the Bible, we have from the Jews and the Christians, Isaiah, come let us reason. And also in Proverbs, it says, every man thinks he's right in his own eyes until he's cross-examined, which is part of our jury system. You know, 12 people, um, the 12 tribes of Israel, you have one from each tribe representing them and whatnot. It's very, very powerful stuff. Um, clip number 11, clip number 11. Um, all right, just assure me of one thing, because uh, all you have to do is put your name into the Internet and out jumps all kinds of stuff. Whoever insults Islam or insults the Prophet Muhammad deserves capital punishment. Uh, I believe it was a few years back when... Um, okay, so whoever insults the Prophet, I do. I spit on the Prophet. I insult the Prophet. No. I can't insult the prophet. The prophet insulted himself. I have never done the crazy, lunatic, dangerous, murdering things that Muhammad did and the sexual exploits he did with six-year-old girls and the sexual exploits he did with a dead woman. And after he defeated the Jewish army, the Mecca and the Medina phase, when he went back to Medina, he was powerful. He destroyed them. And what he did was he cut off the head of the leader of the Jews, and then he raped the widow, who five minutes before had been the wife of the leader of the Jews. He raped her. Wow. How is that for grief therapy? Muhammad, the, the grief therapeutic. You know, I get so crazy on this stuff. Like, okay, uh, clip number nine, clip number nine. Jordan's King Abdullah visit President Obama this morning at the White House. They will discuss the fight against ISIS, Syria's ongoing civil war, and Middle East peace. I spoke with the King on Thursday and asked him about the ISIS threat. He called it a battle between good and evil connected to a broader global jihadist movement. We have to have sooner, I hope rather than later, a strategic, holistic approach to being able to deal with all these organizations that actually are the same, different names, but the same beliefs. What would a holistic approach look like? This is an issue that we really have to combine our strategies, and this is sort of one of the reasons why I'm here in, in, in Washington, too. Let's, let's not, I, I know we have to concentrate on, uh, on Syria and, and Iraq, but we really have to have a... All right. ISIS wants to cut off his head. It's real simple. ISIS are Sunni. They believe in the Sunnah, the tradition. The king of Jordan is Wahhabi. He came, his people, his tribe was pretty much kicked out of Arabia as Wahhabis went up and they started Jordan. They are also considered to be Sunni, but they're a little bit different. So 
ISIS, anything ISIS doesn't like, they just go kill them. They'll kill you. They'll kill me. They'll kill the king of Jordan. They'll kill Shiites. They'll kill Salah, uh, um, Sufis. They'll kill anybody they don't like. They're the guys, ISIS, that goes over to Libya and chops off the head of the 21 Coptic Christians and says that that's a loving thing to do. Now, those 21 Coptic Christians were there making a living working in the oil industry to help their families, taking care of their families back in uh, Egypt. It's interesting to me because in the Muslim world, they want Christians to come work for them because, because Christians don't lie. They're honest. They don't steal. And they try to do the best they can for the glory of God. Wherever the bloody banner of Jesus goes, there you will find the highest degree of peace, order, liberty, and prosperity. It won't be perfect. Of course it's not perfect because man is not perfect and our Constitution is based on the depravity of man and that's why in our Constitution it's simple. Divide power, enumerate power, power not enumerated to the feds is reserved for the states because you cannot put all of the power in the hands of one man, conflate that power because power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. And now in the United States, sadly, we got so much power in the bureaucracy outside of the supervision of Congress that we've got run amok agencies. Okay. And we've got Obama doing the crazy things he's doing, demanding to conflate power also. And so we're having a terrible time in America with corruption. And it's, ende it's not endemic just to the Democrats, but to the Republicans also. Okay. Clip number eight. Clip number eight. ISIS is Islam from this Egyptian Muslim. Clip number Kamanya, eight. لا أؤمن بوجود الإله. لم أكن أرغب في أن أكون لا دينيا أو أن أترك الإسلام. ولكن بعد يعني حياة طويلة مع هذا الدين يعني امتدت ل 27 سنة قررت أن مش ممكن أبدأ أستمر مع الدين ده وأن الناس كلها كانت ممكن تأخذ الموقف دوت لو لو هي أتيحت لها فرصة أن هي تفكر بحرية في في الموضوع ده لكن اللي بيحصل أن الناس بتتحرم من فرصة أن هي تأخذ القرار ده أو أن هي ت تفكر بتفكير نقدي بخصوص الدين الإسلام ديانة صعبة جدا لعل دلوقتي تصرفات داعش تكسيد عملي للدين ده النصوص القرآنية واضحة جدا حينما يقول فضرب الرقاب إذا هذا كلام واضح قاتل الذين لا يؤمنون بالله ولا باليوم الآخر ولا يحرمون ما حرم الله ورسوله ولا دينه دين الحق من الذين أتوا الكتاب حتى يعطوا الجزية عن يد هم صغرون هذا كلام واضح تفهمه داعش وتطبقه في العراق أو في سوريا أو في أي مكان تطبقه بك حرام حينما يسبون النساء هكذا فعل النبي وهكذا فعل أصحابه أنا أحترم أحمد كإنسان كشخص إنما ما قلته الآن كلام لا يستحق لا يستحق الاحترام على الإطلاق مع أنني أؤمن بحرية الحوار وحرية العقيدة فمن شاء فليؤمن ومن شاء فليؤمن واو wow. أوكي okay. come let us reason not with Islam Okay, so you have a guy that leaves Islam and that Imam wanted to cut his head off. And this goes back to our first clip with Yusuf Estes, the erstwhile pastor, Protestant pastor, now become lunatic um, Imam for Islam, saying that nowhere in the Quran is it safe to kill innocent people and whatnot. That, right there, you saw it right there. And then the Imam is lying again, doing taqiyya, saying, I respect you as a person, but not what you were saying about the Quran. That's a lie, too. He wants to cut his head off. How do you, if you want to cut somebody's head off, you obviously you don't respect them. Now, under Islam, as a Christian, or if you're a communist or you are um, a Nazi soldier in World War II, I would prefer not to kill you. I would prefer, as a Christian, that you surrender. But I also know, in accordance with 1 Timothy 5.8, a man who does not take care of his family is worse than a non-believer. And I know it is my duty, if my calling for the glory of God is to be a military guy like a policeman or a deputy sheriff, to be a military man to protect the people of my tribe or my nation. That is my calling. And if I throw that 
calling out, then woe be upon me. I, th I believe it was King Uzziah in the Old Testament who was a very good military king, but then he decided he wanted to get out of his sphere of authority. He wanted to go outside of the authority granted to him by God to be a king and a military guy, and he wanted to become the high priest. So he goes into the temple, puts on the garments of the high priest, and he struck with some kind of a disease until he took off the garments and he uh, repented and whatnot. I, and this, this confuses a lot of Christians. When our soldiers went into D-Day, we showed all of the dead, our Christian army under the cross. Were all of them born again? No. But they all operated under the rules of engagement of the Ten Commandments at that time. And I have proof, evidence, and facts from Department of Defense that clearly shows that. And Guidebook for the Marines 1967 agrees with that, too. That was nonetheless their behavior, their axiological, the science of ethics, their behavior was in accordance with the Ten Commandments. And that was their calling to protect their mothers, their fathers, their sisters, their brothers, their families, their community. In Romans 13, we are told, commanded by God that some of us are called to do that, just as some are called to be evangelists, prophets, um, faith healers, speaking in tongues, missionaries, all those things. I am not called to do that. God called me to use the sword in accordance with his holy Law, the law written on the heart, as codified in the Ten Commandments. When that army that lies resting in peace in Normandy, when they stormed ashore the beach, they did not come with gospel tracts. They did not come with a Bible. They came in accordance with a Bible, with a sword, to wreak wrath and to be revengers for God to protect the people of Europe. That is lost in translation today by so many well-meaning Christians. I do not accept that whatsoever. I am called to do great and mighty works in accordance with the Ten Commandments, protecting my wife, my children, my grandchildren, my tribe, my nation. And that is a very noble thing. And in fact, if you go through the Bible... And look at all of the kings and generals who are mentioned in there. Hebrews 11 talks about the giant armies of Christians who drove away the enemy. It's a good thing to do. With Islam expanding rapidly now because the church has pretty much disappeared from Europe, and so you're left with, sadly, people who don't believe in the Ten people who don't believe in the law written on the heart, people who do not believe in do unto others as you would have done unto yourself, people who do not believe in do not unto others as you would have done unto yourself, sometime between one and five years, one and five years, the people of Germany, of France, of Holland, of Belgium, of Sweden, of Austria, of all of the countries in Europe are going to rise up. They are 90% of Europe. They outnumber the Muslims nine to one. The Muslims are less than 10%. They outnumber the Muslims. They're going to wipe them out. They don't need guns. They don't need airplanes. They will lose their tempers very soon. You watch. Pegida. P like Paul. E like Edward. G like India. D like David. A. Pegida. People of Europe against Islam. There are branches in the United States now. The English Defense League and the different defense leagues in Europe are rising up because the law is written on the heart. When it says in Romans 1 and 2, when the Gentiles do that which is in accordance with the law of God, taking care of their families, protecting their families, that's exactly what they're doing. That conscience with knowledge, conscience, con, with, science, science knowledge, with knowledge, the knowledge of good and evil axiology, the science of ethics. They will protect their people. They are. It's already happening. And the leaders of Europe are absolutely terrified of this, but Islam cannot control itself because Satan cannot control himself. And what did Muhammad do? Muhammad did what Satan did. And even today, when Satan knows he's going to get whooped in the battle and thrown in the lake of fire, the, the moron continues doing it, knowing he knows the chapters. He can quote scriptures. He knows he's going to get whooped, but he keeps doing it. Wow. Okay. 
Allah Akbar on that. No, Yeshua Akbar, clip number five, Hamsa, clip number five. It's getting hard to keep up with all these Quran-inspired atrocities that have nothing to do with Islam. We know they have nothing to do with Islam because our politicians keep telling us that, and they are all Islamic scholars. They are, aren't they? Yes, the violence is coming exclusively from Muslims, but only because their religion, the one that has nothing to do with Islam, tells them to kill unbelievers, meaning people who don't follow the religion with a knife to our throat that has nothing to do with Islam. It's true that the more Muslims there are in a society, the more dangerous it is for gay people and Jews, but Islamic gay hatred and Islamic Jew hatred have no more to do with Islam than Quran-based Islamic terrorism. None of the violence in Islamic scripture, page after page of it, has anything to do with Islam. When Muslim terrorists quote the Quran as they're killing people, you don't seriously think that's got anything to do with the religion they follow. That could be any book they're quoting from. They just happen to pick that one because it's their religion. Duh. I mean, what are we saying here? That we should ban all books now? Let's keep it real. Of course, if you follow the religion that has nothing to do with you-know-what, then only one book really matters, and we all know which one that is. It's the book that goes out of its way to make an enemy of the rest of mankind. It's the book whose influence is currently making Western society more dangerous, less tolerant, less civilized, and less free, while we dance around the maypole and call it multiculturalism. But this slow draining away of our fundamental freedoms and cowardly betrayal of future generations has nothing to do with Islam, apart from the fact that it has everything to do with it. But that doesn't mean it has anything to do with it. Don't be so racist. The partiality of British police who operate a brazen double standard. Good job. I like Pat Kendall. Uh, he's an atheist, but he's, he's accurate. He's using proof, evidence, and facts and refuting the moron use of Estes. And Zakir Naik. Okay, from the Mecca and the Medina. Remember, the Mecca and the Medina. When you're weak, it's the Mecca phase, and you lie that you love the Christians and the Jews. When you're strong, the Medina phase, you go back and you kill all the Christians and Jews. So the first four chapters of the Quran are the Mecca phase, lying because Muhammad didn't want to get killed, that they love the Christians and the Jews. From verse or chapter 5 on, then we have the true abrogate, abrogators or the true verses that Isis and Yusuf Estes and Zakir Naik and all these crazy lunatics use and lie that they don't use them. Okay, from the Quran, chapter 8, verse 60. So this is from the Mecca phase. This is the, the part that is used today. The stuff that Yusuf Estes quoted, they don't use that today. He's lying. Yusuf Estes, you are a Liar, Pinocchio. Okay, from the Quran, in my left hand, from the Quran, in my left hand. And it doesn't matter if it's Arabic, English, French, it's all the same. Against them, make ready your strength to the utmost of your power, including steeds of war, to strike terror into the hearts of the enemies of God and your enemies and others besides whom you may not know, but whom Allah doth know. Whatever you shall spend in the cause of Allah shall be repaid unto you, and you shall be treated unjustly. Okay, that's from Surah 860. And from the Quran, Surah 929, which is used today, Yusuf Estes. Nobody that's a Muslim uses chapter 2. It's abro gay ted You know, it is not used today unless... Yusuf Estes wants to lie like Dr. Zakir Naik lies. And by the way, Dr. Zaik publishes like Ayatollah Khomeini, Khomeini heaven. Sex with goats and sheep is okay. All right. 929 from the Quran. This is the Mecca phase. This is the abrogate door. This is for right now, today. This is ISIS, Boko Haram. These are good Muslims. Fight those who believe not in Allah, nor the last day, nor hold that forbidden which hath been forbidden by Allah and his apostle Muhammad, nor acknowledge the religion of truth, that's Islam, even if they are of the people of the book. Allah Akbar! Yusuf 
Estes, you got outed, dude. You're a liar right there. Right there. Come on, Yusuf Estes. You're a liar, liar, pants on fire, dude. Oh, all right. I'm done. I've had enough. I hate Islam with a passion. All the murder, killing, raping, insanity, ISIS, all these lunatics, all these crazy people, mean to women, and then they come back with this stuff. Oh, woe is us. Everybody's picking on us. Well, yeah. Yeah. ISIS, I appreciate you putting me in your book, Dabiq. I appreciate you putting my photo in your book, Dabiq. Um, I showed it to the FBI and the sheriffs today. Rest assured, they're working on it. I really don't care. If I get killed, I get to go to Jesus. If I don't get killed, I get to talk about Jesus. So Muslims, why don't you just repent and come over to Jesus? Adios.